them that we can go to and there's no limits on on how much fellowship we can have with the Lord, how much of his love we can receive. Uh, it's unlimited. And so as we think about the ascended life, the ascended life, meaning it's life with the Lord, walking with the Lord, not just knowing facts uh, about the word of God, but, uh, and Wendy said this earlier as we were talking, it is actually letting that word become life to us so that we can go higher and higher uh, with him. And so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred and and uh, and just uh, we'll get started tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We can ascend to heaven in this life. And that's what we're going to be talking about. And so... A simple title is The Ascended Life. And uh, what we know from Jesus is that he came as the Son of God. The uh, angel told Mary he's the Son of God. Um, John the Baptist, uh, when he saw him, he said, this is the Son of God. Um, the Father, Heavenly Father said, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. And uh, angels called him the son of God, and even demons called him the son of God. So he definitely was the son of God. He came as the son of God. And even his disciples, it was revealed to them that it was, that he was the son of God. You are the Christ, the son of God. Mm -hmm. That's what Peter said about him. So he definitely came as the son of God. But what's very interesting is that he found a new identity in the word of God. And so he redefined himself by what the word of God said about him. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about then. Well, what did the word of God say about him? How did he respond to that? And uh, there were no limits when he was the son of God. And of course, he was in eternity. He's always been God. And then he came to earth as the son of God, uh, again, with no limits. <clears throat> but he redefined himself to be the son of man with limits. He put limits on himself. And well, the, it's such an important concept of redefining ourselves that uh, I believe in uh, October, I also talked about a message called redefining yourself. We can all redefine ourselves. And so this is an extension of that message. And I want, to, to, I want us to know that what the word of God says about us, that's our true identity. We know that we had a mother and we had a father and, and we came uh, into the earth and we had education and job experience and all of those, but those are not our true identity. Our true identity mm -hmm. is found in the word of God. And we see how Jesus did it. And although he was the uh, son of God, he saw what Daniel said that he was the son of man. And so just a brief summary of this message, an overview of it then, is uh, uh, John 15, 7 says, Behold, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. So it's about the word then living in us. And we're living in him. And that we're touching eternity. And mm -hmm. that word becomes alive. So if the oh, word is alive, so this is not about intellectual. This is about touching the eternal, the eternal one. And, uh, you know, uh, if Ecclesiastes 3, and I'm going to ask Sherry to read this, but basically God ordained uh, eternity to be in our hearts. And so mm -hmm. that's now. Wow. That's not waiting wow. until we are in eternity. That's for mm. eternity to be in our heart. We can touch eternity today. And we're going to follow the life of Jesus and see how he did it, what he did. E Ecclesiastes 3.11. <clears throat> he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in our hearts. I love that. Ex ex except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. Okay. So mm. 
God ordained eternity in your heart. There, It's there, eternity. And you can touch it and you can live it. So we're not just mere human beings walking on this earth. Mm -hmm. We have a heavenly home and we're there now. We're, we're, we are a citizen of heaven now. It's not just waiting until we get over there. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I want you to see that although Jesus was the son of God, Daniel saw the son of man uh, with a kingdom. And mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Sherry to read this in just a minute, but I'll just give you a background about it. Uh, Israel had been invaded uh, time and time again. They were going to be invaded again and again. And they, by the, all the world empires were going to come through Israel and, and invaded in these invading armies and, and uh, it looked like there was so much uh, uh, chaos and, and hostility going on against Israel uh, but then Daniel saw another vision and it was the son of man and he was going to have an a kingdom and an eternal kingdom mm -hmm. so let's read this verse here yeah, it's Daniel 7 verses 13 and 14 I was watching in the night visions and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall never pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Okay. Hallelujah. So, so the Jews and the Pharisees and the scribes, they, they all saw these uh, verses too. And, the, and they thought there was a general coming, a, na a man mm -hmm. uh, that was going to kick out all of the invading armies uh, that had invaded mm -hmm. uh, Israel and establish a kingdom. And that kingdom would be over uh, all things and over all people and all languages and forever and ever. That's what that's what they saw. But Jesus uh, saw an expanded version of that. Uh, the Jews were looking at a, a very limited view of the Son of Man, but but Jesus, by the Holy Spirit, began to see uh, a different view of the Son of Man. And so let's see what what he saw. And I want to start with Hebrews uh, ten seven because he identified himself by what the word of God said about him. Read these verses. Hebrews 10, 7. Then I said, behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written about me to do your will, O God. Okay, so that Jesus, obviously that's talking about Jesus. It obviously applies to him, but it applies to you and me as well. We need to look into the scriptures and say what they are saying to us. They become alive to us by the spirit of God, and, and that becomes our identity. So we should redefine ourselves by what heaven says about us. And that's what Jesus did. Where the Jews thought he was going to be a general, a conquering uh, hero, uh, he, he saw a different thing. And uh, for one thing, he uh, identified himself as a suffering servant. Wow. And so let's look at wow. these verses. Wow. Wow. So this wow. doesn't sound like a conquering general. Mm -hmm. He sees a broader view of what Daniel saw. He, he, sells, he sees the reality of it and the truth of it. And he sees himself as a suffering servant. And uh, that's where the Jews uh, really had a problem with him. Because if he was this general that was going to create, re-establish a kingdom forever, then he, he wasn't going to die. But look at this. Mm -hmm. Well, be before I read this one, I just had something come to me, and that is in the in Hebrews 10, 7, it says that he's going to do your will, oh God. And so when Jesus saw what was written in the word of God about him, he knew that he was going to the cross. He knew that he was going to be the Savior. And and he, this here right here, he says, I'm going to do your will, oh God. Amen. And, and I'm going to redefine myself and, and, and 
put some limits on there and and I'm going to walk as a man and I'm going to go to the cross and I'm going to do your will, O oh God. Okay. Now let's read John 5, 19. Therefore, Jesus answered and was saying to them, truly, truly, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself. For whatever the father does, these things the son also shall do in the same way. Okay, so Jesus is putting limits on himself, okay? John 5, 30. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own, but the will of him who sent me. And here again, we see that Jesus is lining himself up with the will of God. He's redefining himself so that he comes in line with what God is wanting him to accomplish. Amen. And then and then um, all of these, of these three verses, we're talking about mm -hmm. limiting himself. Even though he was the son of God, he is defining himself, redefining himself as the son of man and putting limits on himself that he can only do what he sees the father do. And that's all by the spirit. Okay, and then John 8, 28. So Jesus said, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am and I do nothing on my own, but I say these things as the Father has instructed me. Okay, so he puts Hallelujah. limits on himself and he's defining himself by the scriptures. Now what the scriptures say about him is he's a suffering servant. So let's read this. Uh, Matthew 20. Verses 18 and 19. But I want to welcome Mary. Mary, we're so glad to, to have you with us tonight. Matthew 20, verses 18 and 19. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify. And on the third day, he will rise again. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. He's coming hallelujah. back. So, okay. So the Jews missed that. They missed that part of the story. Yeah. Uh, they, they thought he was coming as a general. And now he's saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to suffer. They're going to, I'm going they're going to, to the kill cross. me. I'm going to go to the cross. They're going to kill me. But I will rise again on the third day. Hallelujah. 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 And, and here he comes back and he and he reaffirms the Son of Man as coming in the clouds like Daniel saw. So let's read this verse. In Luke 17, verses 24 and 25. For as the lightning that flashes out of one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so also shall the Son of Man will be in his day. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Okay, so Jesus uh, refers back to what Daniel had said. Hey, the Son of Man is coming. He's coming in the clouds. But Jesus now is pointing out that's his second coming. That wasn't his first coming. His first coming, he suffered uh, as uh, the suffering servant. He died on the cross, but he rose again the third day, and he's coming back. And so he is the son of man. So he has redefined himself. And that's what we need to do. We need to follow his example uh, and redefine him, uh, to redefine ourselves by what the scripture says, not what our parents said, not what our education that's said, right. not what our job experience has been. Redefine yourself by what scriptures are brought alive to you by the word of God. Now, this has some important applications. Mm -hmm. and, and the first application uh, that I want us to talk about, and this is where I get the concept of uh, the ascended life, because Jesus, we know, was the son of God, but he acted only as the son of man. He restricted himself. He laid down everything else. And even though he yeah. was equal to God, uh, he thought it not robbery to be equal to God. He humbled himself unto death. And, mm. but, but he makes this incredible statement in John uh, about while he was a man, 
on the earth, he ascended to heaven. Mm, hallelujah. So when he was Woo. in a form like you and me, he ascended to heaven. Okay, read this verse. John 3, 13. No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended first from heaven, the Son of Man. So while Hallelujah. he is a man restricting himself to be a man on the earth, he ascended to heaven. So while we are believers on the earth, we can ascend to heaven. So let's read this out of another Hallelujah. translation. Okay. Is this how they amplify? Yes, how they amplify. Same verse. What verse is it? John, uh, John 3, 13. Okay. And yet no one has ever gone up to heaven, and there is one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man himself, who is, who dwells, has his home in heaven. So while he's the Son of Man, while he's, the res while he's restricted himself to be a person, mm, mm, a believer, mm, mm. Filled with the Holy Spirit. And so he's setting a model for you and me. Oh, uh, and yeah. that's why it's important. Because if God did all of these great things, if Jesus did all of these great things as the Son of God, well, that's wonderful. But he did them as the Son of Man. Everything he did was the Son of Man filled with the Holy Spirit, born of the Spirit, filled mm -hmm, of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we are. So he's setting a model. He's setting a precedent about how we can operate. And that's oh, really good, important. Good. And he recognized that he could ascend, even though he was a man on the earth, he could ascend to heaven. That is exciting. Oh, and so he has set some footsteps and some pathway. He's established a pathway that we can follow on this earth while we're living here we can ascend to heaven oh now, hallelujah hallelujah and that's a that's the bottom line of oh, this message oh. uh we can ascend to heaven now mm -hmm. what we want to do we're talking about application the first application is we can ascend to heaven the second application i want to talk about is we can redefine ourselves just like jesus redefined himself see we were we could consider ourselves as mere human being with a mother a father or school experience and education and job experience we could define ourselves that way but we can be like jesus follow the holy spirit see what the holy spirit mm -hmm. says and, and let those verses come alive to us so this is not high head knowledge but this is the scriptures coming alive to us, abiding within us, and we abiding in Christ. We're touching eternity. We're touching him. We're living the ascended life. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. This is exciting yeah. to me. Yeah. Now, okay, so we need to redefine ourselves, and that's the new man. And so we're now talking about Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verses 22 uh, through 24, and so I'd like for you to read these. But we're thinking now, Jesus redefined himself. Let's redefine ourselves by what the scriptures say about us. Okay, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. That you put off concerning former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Oh, so it's up here in the mind. Uh -huh. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So we put off the old man, put, put on, on the, the new, new man. man. Now, how are we going to be ascended to heaven? Well, Paul talks about with a little bit different terminology. Let's see what he said in Ephesians 2, verse 6. Mm -hmm. He says we can also ascend to heaven. How do we do it? And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So Paul is writing again. Jesus said he had ascended, which means we can do whatever he mm -hmm. did so we can ascend. But now Paul wrote it with a little different terminology. And he said, we're already seated in heavenly places. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. See, we, we died with Christ yes. at the cross. We were buried with him in oh, baptism. Hallelujah. We were raised, raised with him. him. Oh, hallelujah. So let's Woo! live the resurrected life. And we have been seated 
in heavenly places, places. with him. We need to think in the, these terms. Yes, we do. Uh, let's redefine ourselves to be that ascended life and, and touching eternity now, not waiting until yes. sweet by and by. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so we're Second seated Peter. there. Now we're, to, we're moving to Second Peter. He has given us promises. And by these promises, we can partake of the divine. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can partner with the divine. Okay, read these. Wow, these wow. Second Peter 1, 4, by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers. Listen to that. You can take hold of and you can be a partner with of the divine nature. You can do it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you can partake of the divine. You can partner with the divine. Why? Oh, hallelujah, because he's given us the promises. The promises have to become alive to us by the Spirit of God. Again, not intellectual knowledge, but we're renewing our mind. Mm, so putting the Word yes. of God inside, let it come alive. And what it, when it comes alive by the Spirit of God, then that's, that's the promises. And those promises define us. Ooh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, you're healed <laughs> by his stripes. You are healed. Oh, yes. oh, hallelujah. Your mind has been renewed. Wow, you're, wow. You're partakers of the divine nature by the promises. Well, um, and I, I just want to say this. You have a <clears throat> divine benefit from ascending and living an ascended life. That means that you're above worldly things. You're above sickness. You're above pain. You're above lack or poverty. You're above any anxiety or frustration or anger. You're above all of those things that are here in this worldly arena. You have ascended and you are partakers of his divine nature. Hallelujah. hallelujah. That was good, Sherry. Yes, hallelujah. Now, when you believe this, oh, this is John 14, 12. When you believe this, when you believe that you are an ascended being, you are you have an ascended life, you're living an ascended life, then you can do what Jesus did. Amen. Ooh, hallelujah. hallelujah. John 14, 12. Truly, truly, I say unto you, the one who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do or she will do also and greater works than these they will do because I'm going to the Father and he's going to send the Holy Spirit. And through the Holy Spirit, we can not only do the things that Jesus did, but we can do even greater things because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. But you have to Hallelujah. believe. You have to believe that you have the new life. You have to put off that the old life. That you've ascended. And that you have the new life. You have ascended uh, to heaven. You Woo! Have Hallelujah. When you believe these things, you can do what Jesus did. Now, what did he do? Well, he, he raised the healed, dead. <laughs> he healed the sick. He cleansed the lepers. He uh, raised the dead. He cast out demons. And then and on and oh, on hallelujah. and on. Hallelujah. And you can do what he did Amen. as an ascended life. Hallelujah. As you live the ascended oh, lifestyle. I want to live the oh, ascended life. I do too. Hallelujah. You want to live the ascended life. Hallelujah. Thank you for Hallelujah. being here today. It's a, I just want to encourage you to live the ascended life. You can do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to turn it over Amen. to you. She may Hallelujah. have something to say. Well, I just want to, uh, to say that you know, we welcome Lucy and, and baby Luke, or it's not, he's not a baby anymore. Uh, I guess we call him Master Luke. Uh, and uh, uh, we're just uh, so happy to see all of your faces. And and um, uh, we love you and we want the best for you. And, and even more so, God wants the best for you. He wants the best for George and Joy. He wants the best for Wendy and for new song and for mary and for lucy and luke and kevin and young may and her mom and 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 tommy and victoria he wants 
He wants us to ascend and walk with him. You know, it says that Enoch walked with God and he was no more. And I believe that as we become no more, then we do take on a new identity. We take on a new identity. And you know what? When you take on that new identity with the FBI in the natural realm, when a person uh, is um, takes on a new identity, then they gave, they give them a new place to live. Uh, they give them a new name. They give them a new identity. So <laughs> why? So that the enemy cannot get to them. Amen. And all the old is gone. And all the old is gone. <laughs> all the old junk is gone. <laughs> and so when we take on that new identity from the word of God, then we are invisible to the enemy. Hallelujah. The enemy cannot come to harass us or bring us sickness or pain or disease. He cannot do that. We're hidden. Because in, we're hidden or, in Christ. Hallelujah. And we're Woo! seated with him in heavenly places. Oh, praise far God. Far above Thank the Jesus. enemy. Far above sickness. Far and above. Amen. Amen. Depression. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.